Well, welcome to the final unit of the third week of our Open SAP course, Getting Started with Data Science. Here, we're going to take a look at regression and classification. Regression analysis is a collective name for techniques used for the modeling and analysis of numerical data consisting of values of a target, which we call a dependent variable, and of one or more explanatory or independent variables. Basically, we use regression analysis to build a numerical equation or a model that estimates the values of the target variable using the explanatory variables as data inputs. The parameters of the, of the regression model are then estimated to give a best fit of the data. There are numerous types of regression models that you can use. The choice often depends on, a, on the kind of data you've got for your target variable. If you've got time, please read some of the references provided as these will give you um, a much clearer understanding, a much deeper understanding of some of the other types of regression analysis that are available. In this slide, I'm showing a simple linear regression. The target is a continuous variable. The target variable in the regression equation is modeled as a function of the explanatory variables with a constant term and an error term. The error term is treated as a random variable. It represents unexplained variation in the target variable. You can see that the equation of the straight line is y equals a plus bx. In this simple equation, b is a regression coefficient. Regression coefficients are estimates of the unknown population parameters and they describe the relationship between an explanatory variable and the target. In linear regression, coefficients are the values that multiply the explanatory values. Suppose you have the following regression equation, y equals 5 plus 2x. In this equation, 2 is the coefficient, x is the explanatory variable, and 5 is the constant. The sign of each coefficient indicates the direction or the relationship between the explanatory variable and the target variable. A positive sign indicates that as the explanatory variable increases, the target variable also increases. A negative sign indicates that as the explanatory variable increases, the target variable decreases. The coefficient value represents the mean change in the target, given a one unit change in the explanatory variable. So for example, if the coefficient is plus two, the value of the target variable increases by two for every one unit change in the explanatory variable. This demonstration shows a simple bivariate linear regression, y equals a plus bx. This means that there are two variables in the data set. Every value of the explanatory variable x is associated with a value of the target variable y. Terminology across analytical disciplines is quite varied. In statistics, the properties of observations are termed explanatory variables or independent variables or regressors. Um, and these are also the X variables in the equation. The categories to be predicted are known as targets or dependent variables or outcomes. This is the Y var variable in the equation. In this example, the y variable is a continuous variable, and the demo will use a linear regression. In machine learning, the observations are often known as instances. The explanatory variables are termed features, and these are often grouped together into a feature vector, and the possible categories to be predicted are classes. 
So, in this simple two variable data set, there is only one explanatory variable and one target. In more complex examples, multiple linear regression models, uh, these models the relationship between two or more explanatory variables and a target variable by fitting a linear equation to the observed data. In the terminology of predictive analysis, regression is considered an instance of supervised learning. This is learning where a training set of correct outcome values, the target, is available. This is a simple bivariate linear regression, and I'm using orange to uh, build the model. Um, of course, you can use uh, anything else that you want to, um, if you're more familiar with it or you prefer it. The data are available for you. They're, um, um, the actual data set's called OpenSAP DS3 Linear Regression Train. It's a CSV file. So the first thing we need to do is to bring the data in. I'll use the file widget, and I'll just double click on it, and I'll show you the data. That's the one I'm going to be using here. It's the training data set. Also notice that there's an apply data set, and we'll be using that in the second part of this demo. Now, this is a, um, a, a linear regression. And so obviously with regression, we've got input variables and we've got a target variable. And so the X variable here is an explanatory variable, it's an input variable, and that's defined as a feature. But the Y variable, its role isn't a feature, it's actually a target. So I'll just change that there and I'll just apply it. Now, let's have a look at the data so I can show you what, what, it, what, what it looks like. So I'll bring in the data table widget and join it up and then double click on the data table and you can see the data. And you can see it's really simple. It's a very, very small data set. And I'm keeping it simple just so that I can explain to you the regression approach. And then once we've built a model, I want to explain how we actually apply it onto new data. And so we've got X values, one to seven, and we've got associated Y values. And that goes from a Y value of 40 up to a Y value of 80 here. And I can also visualize this. So if I go into the visualize menu, I can use a scatter plot. And I'll join that up, double click on it. And here you can see the um, X values on the X axis and the Y values. And if I wanted to, quite quickly, I could just show the regression line. But in this demo, I'm actually going to show you how to build the regression. So that's um, the data and a little bit of visualization. So what I'm going to do is to build um, a, a linear regression. So I'll go into the models. And you can see here, there's a whole range of different, um, different algorithms you could choose. I want to use linear regression. I'll drag that in, join it up, and I'll double click on it. Now, I'm going to use in this demo, demo the um, simplest um, parameter settings, which is no regularization. There are other options that you could um, try and test if you wanted to. So, for example, you could try and see what happens if you use something that's called a ridge regression or a lasso regression or elastic net regression. And if you want to learn more about these, please try them out, of course. Um, and you can just click on the question mark at the bottom here, and it will take you into the help page. And from the help page, you can click straight into a uh, wiki. But I'm gonna keep it really, really simple uh, for this demo. Now, the data has gone into the linear regression. What I want to do is to do some testing to see how well the linear regression has built the model. And so if I go into the evaluate menu, um, there's a widget that's called test and school. So I'll bring that in and I'll join it up. Now this is gonna evaluate um, the 
um, predictive performance of the model. And so what I want to do is to compare the output from the linear regression to the actual data. So not only do I want to join it, the test and score widget to the linear regression, I also want to join it to the original data, which I've done there. So now it can do the comparison for me. And if I double click on this, it will give me some evaluation parameters. Now these are very common evaluation parameters for a, a regression and you'll see them quite a lot. And so there's MSE, R, MSE, MAE, and R2 or R squared. So I'm just gonna to explain to you what these um, actually mean. So the mean squared error, the MSE, measures the average of the squares of the errors or the deviations. And basically the deviations, um, it's the difference between the estimator and what is estimated. Then we have the root mean squared error, the RMSE. Uh, so this is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the squares of any set of numbers. And basically it's a measure of the imperfection of the fit of the estimator to the data. Then we have the mean absolute error, the MAE. And this is used to measure how close forecasts or predictions are to the outcomes. And then finally, we've got the uh, coefficient of determination, the R2 or the R squared. And this is the proportion of the total variation in Y explained by fitting the regression. It's the square of the correlation between the predicted Y scores and the actual Y scores, and it ranges from zero to one. So an R squared of zero means that the target variable cannot be predicted from the explanatory variable. An R squared of one means the target variable can be predicted without error perfectly from the explanatory variable. An R squared between zero and one indicates the extent to which the target variable is predictable. So for example, an R squared of 0 0.1 means that 10% of the variance in Y is predictable from X, while an R squared of 0 0.2 means that 20% is predictable, and so on. You need to be very careful when you are interpreting R squared. It's a function of the number of explanatory variables present in the model. So that means as you add more explanatory variables, the X's, R squared almost always increases, and it never decreases. And this is because the addition of explanatory variables to the model causes prediction errors to be smaller. Basically, with these evaluation criteria, what you want are all the error values to be as small as, um, as possible, and the R squared to be as close to one as possible. Now, there are obviously many different approaches that you could use to measure and visualize the performance of the model that you've created. So, for example, I can use the predictions widget. So, if I drag the predictions widget in here and join it up and double click on it, we can see a comparison of the actual Y values with the X values here on the right hand side with the output from the linear regression. So, that just gives me a comparison of the linear regression output to the actual output. And again, I could, if I wanted to, visualize this on a scatter plot. So I'll bring the scatter plot in and I'll join that up. And here on the scatter plot, what I can do is to change the X axis to show the linear regression output. So now what I'm comparing is the, the Y value from the linear regression to the actual Y value. And if I put the regression line on here, basically this line shows the values for the hypothetical perfect prediction where the predicted Y value is equal to the actual Y value. 
So what we've done, we've built a predictive model. And if you remember from a previous unit, this is called the training phase. Now what I'm going to show you is how we can use the model to actually make predictions. And this is called the applying phase. So here what I'm going to do is to use um, an, another data set, the apply data set, and this is available to you as well. It's um, OpenSAP DS3 Linear Regression Apply.csv. And um, what I'll do is um, I'll use another file widget. So I'll go back to data, bring in the file, double click on it, and um, just go to the apply data set. You can see that that's the apply data set there, underscore apply.csv, open it. And again, what I want to do is just to change the Y value here from a feature to the target. I'll just apply it. Let's close that. And just to show you what the data looks like, I'll put a data table on. Double click. And you'll notice now, when you look at that data, that the Y values where X equals eight and X equals nine are actually missing. And what we're gonna do is to use the model we just built to predict these values. If you remember, um, applying the model onto new data and predicting the target value is sometimes also called scoring or inference. So you'll come across um, a lot of this terminology. Um, what I'm gonna do next is to put in the prediction widget. So I'll go back to evaluate, take the prediction widget, take it there, and uh, I'm gonna join the apply data to the prediction widget and the linear regression to the prediction widget. Now, you'll notice here that there's a little error that round um, red X bar. And basically this error shows that um, there's a problem with the missing values. And this is for um, the cases where X equals eight and, and X equals nine. You can safely ignore this error um, in this demonstration. And it's only occurring because the, the system is unable to calculate the accuracy metrics when there are missing values. Now, um, if I just double click here on predictions, you can see the linear regression output, the Y and the X value. And if I scroll down, you can see there's an uh, estimate for the Y values where the question marks are. Just to make that a little bit clearer for you, I'll go back into data and I'll put in a data table and just join that data table up and double click on it. Now you should be able to see this a bit more clearly now. And so here where X equals eight and nine, there were question marks. And now we can see that the model is estimating that when X equals eight, the Y value will be 83.57. And when X equals nine, the Y value will be 89.46. And so basically what you've done here is you've built a linear regression model and you visualize the data. You've um, assessed um, some of the um, performance metrics, and then you've used that predictive model, um, applied it onto new data, to predict missing values in that new data.